All right. So tonight we're talking about gifts. We're going to talk about all the different areas of gifts. The goal of this study tonight is for you guys to know who, like, where do you excel? Where are the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you guys? I think it's important that once we get saved, that we know where we fit in in the body of Christ so we can serve others and we can know who we are in the kingdom of God, right? A lot of Christians are Christians for years and they can't even answer these questions. So I think it's important that we have an understanding of how God works through us and who we are in him. And we're also going to talk about the fivefold. And I got a lot to say about the fivefold because like 94% of a lot of the fivefold is done wrong. It's done wrong. So we're going to we're going to look at what the Bible says and then we're going to discuss some things on this tonight. Um so with that being said, I was going to save it for last, but let's do it. Let's start this first. Let's go to Ephesians 4. And we're going to read verses 11 through 13 and this is about the fivefold ministry of God that he gives us. So let's go to Ephesians Ephesians 4 11 through 13. Uh, Chris, you want to read that? Yeah, 100%. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Yeah, God gives us this fivefold ministry to bring us as Christians into perfection of that perfect body of Christ, right? Now, truly, we can only achieve that in, in eternity with God, right? So this lifetime is going to be a process of us working things out. Now, notice he says apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So let's talk about this because there's a lot of people that like to call themselves apostles, and prophets and they like to put that title ship on their name and i'm going to tell you right now like probably like 98 percent of those people are not that thing because a true apostle a true prophet a true evangelist they're going to come in a spirit of humility they don't need to tell you who they are because god proclaims it on their behalf right they have fruit of the holy spirit like a true apostle is going to suffer greatly Hey, look at the Apostle Paul. He suffered immensely for the body of Christ and for the church, right? He didn't go around like gloating in that, right? And they're going to have hardships and adversity. But a true apostle is going to walk in humility and his fruit. He doesn't need to say anything because the fruit declares of itself, right? So God's structure is this. The apostle will build the church. And there's not really that many apostles. There is. This is a real thing. But it's so perverted by Satan that the structure we have is so out of whack, bro. The apostle is supposed to build the church. And as the apostle builds the church, the prophet's supposed to come alongside of him and make sure that it's being built on the word of God and that it's being built in Christ. That's the prophet's job is to help the apostle build up the body in the church, right? And we're going to look a lot at prophecy tonight. Because a lot of what we have is prophecy isn't what the Bible says is prophecy. As a matter of fact, let's look at one of these scriptures now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14.3. 1 Corinthians 14.3. Because people, they, they want that title of prophet. And when they have that title of prophet, they think they're saved under the Old Testament, right? That they're like the Old Covenant. But it ain't the New Covenant. It's the New Covenant. It's not the Old Covenant. Andy, what do you got for 1 Corinthians 14.3? But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. That's it. There it is, right? So in the new covenant of Jesus Christ, a true prophet speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. So visualize this in your mind. You have the apostle who is supposed to build the church, okay? The prophet is supposed to come alongside the apostle and work together to make sure that every stone is built on the word of God by the spirit of the living God. Then you have the evangelist. The evangelist's job is to go out into the cities and draw the people 
to the church, okay? They're drawing them back to that body that the apostle's building, and the prophet is watching it being built very closely. The evangelist draws the people into the church. The pastors, or another word is shepherd, they're overseers. Everybody wants that title. I'm pastor so-and-so. Dude, shepherds or overseers or a true pastor wipes butts and noses, okay? It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, a true pastoral ship is not a desired thing because you're going to be such a servant to all, right? And, and, and anybody that's seeking that title ship, bro, their heart is already wrong coming into it because they're wanting men to recognize them. And we should never have that mind frame. If that is the mind frame, it's not good, okay? We got to make sure the heart is in servitude. So we have the pastors. And then lastly, the mm -hmm. lowest man on the totem pole in the fivefold is teachers, right? And there's, there's, let's, let's look at it because teaching, dude, is a very serious thing before the Lord. Let's go to James 3 1. <laughs> James 3 1. Hey, Jack, could you read that one for us, bro? You got it. I just got to find it. Is it after Galatians? Yeah. Yeah. And then after Hebrews. After Hebrews. Okay. Several books after Galatians. Yeah. Yep. All right. What was that? Three, what? Three, one. Three, one. You got it. Do not become teachers in large numbers, my brothers, since you know that we who are teachers will incur a stricter judgment. Right. So the word of God tells us don't desire to become a teacher, knowing that when you die and stand before the almighty, if you teach the word of God, you're going to be held to a higher standard than most. I mean, that's a terrifying thing when I think about the Lord, you know, that puts the fear of God right in me, bro. But how many teachers do we have today that are out there calling themselves pastors? They want recognition from men. They don't care about a heart of servitude. They just put out all this crazy doctrine on the internet and all this crazy stuff. And they don't think about the repercussions that it causes to the body of Christ, right? So we got to be mindful of all these things, bro. We got to be mindful that God does give us this fivefold outline, but it's a holy thing. And the hearts need to be so in line with the Lord when somebody takes up this position, because like we just read in James, they're going to be held to a higher standard, right? God's going to judge you unlike how he judges everybody else when that day comes and the books are open. Everybody so, I mean, on Facebook. What's that's that? That's all I see on Facebook. Everybody's a preacher now. Everybody. Yeah. That's crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, bro. So we got to check our hearts, all right? So with all that being said, God does give us the fivefold, okay? And it's to bring all of us to that perfect man, okay? Maturing us, growing us, developing us through hardships and adversities that we can put aside our foolish flesh nature and press more into the likeness of Christ through all these things, right? And that's the point of the fivefold, bro, to build up that body, to build up that church, to make sure it's done on a godly foundation, to make sure that the pastors and teachers are serving with the heart of humility and understanding the severity of the office that they hold, right? So with that being said, let's look at gifts. I want to look at gifts because like every believer, okay, we, everybody on this line, if you believe in Jesus Christ is your Lord, if you believe that in your heart, I'm telling you, you have at least one gift. Some of us have three or four, okay? You just know because there's certain areas in your walk that you excel in like discerning of spirits. And this hour is so important that we have discerning spirits, bro, because there is so much deception all over the Internet and everything. So let's look at all that. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the gifts, man, it's like the fivefold. It's just people people do this all wrong. It's like there's no holiness or reverence or fear of God. They're like, oh, look at me. And they're all puffed up with pride and arrogance. And it should, it, dude, this shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't. So let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to read verse 4 through 11. Wade, do you want to read that? 
Sure. <laughs> now there are different gifts, but the same spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. There are different activities, but the same God produces each gift in each person. A manifestation of the spirit is given to each person for the common good. To one is given a message of wisdom through the spirit to another, a message of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the one spirit to another, the performing of miracles to another prophecy to another distinguishing between spirits to another different kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. One in the same spirit is active in all these di distributing to each person as he wills. Right. So God gives the gifts. The gifts come from him. Now, if we take and I want you guys to notice the numbers here, because God always works through numbers. Right. There was nine gifts mentioned there. How many fruits of the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible? Nine. Nine. Right. There's nine Beatitudes. There's nine characteristics of a godly man mentioned in Peter, right? So we see that that number nine just keeps reoccurring itself. There's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, if we break these gifts up in three by three by three. We have three because everything works in threes. We're always talking about that, right? So like um, the first set of gifts would be word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. Those are known as like what's revelation gifts. Then our next three would be the power gifts, which would be faith, healing, and miracles, okay? Then our, our third category of three gifts would be utterance gifts. That would be prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And, um, like, let's look at each one, okay? And I know it's weird, but I want to start with tongues because this is like, this mm -hmm. one's really, really on my heart, Okay. Because this is really done wrong, like big time in the church. And it's a holy <laughs> gift, and it's given from God, and it's done so it in error. So to understand tongues and interpretation of tongues, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. All right? I had a brother not too long ago. He was like a new believer, and he didn't have the gift of tongues. And somebody that he really admired, like was looking up to in ministry, basically told him that if you don't pray in tongues, then you're not saved. And that is like the stupidest thing I've ever heard, bro. Like that some happened people, to me and Sam at the barn with some random yeah. uh, guy they had come in. Yeah. 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 I remember that. That was crazy. Remember Miguel, he had something similar like that happen too, bro. And so this is like a thing, you know what I mean? This is like a thing that people teach that if you don't have the gift of tongues, you're not saved. If anybody tells you that, bro, get away from that person because oh, no, that's no. a lie. All right. So so check this out. Check this out. Let's really understand what is tongues, right? It's hey, very Matthew, simple. Yeah. Can I say one thing? Um, yeah, man. Because I've had this come up before. <clears throat> my one my one friend was trying to uh, – uh, there was something going on, but he was trying to <laughs> – he was basically saying of my wife now, he's saying, you know – uh, she could be an emotionally uh, manipulator, kind of all these characteristics. And I've heard people, even in different servants, you know, stay away from this kind of person. But don't you think it might be helpful to try to explain to them? Like instead of trying to, I know what you, like there's staying away, but then maybe part of it could be, you know, if if you feel strong enough in your own faith to try to explain to them why it might be wrong what they're saying instead of just there's nothing wrong with correction you could correct somebody but then if they're usually people that operate like this they're not going to receive it you know but it's, oh, it's worth yeah. a shot by all means to make, yeah. make the correction for sure yeah if you're yeah. mature enough in your faith and you know what you believe and you can back it up by two or three scriptures and you feel the lord is leading you then by all means absolutely but just yeah. know that I would pray first about it to see if God softens that person's heart, right? Because you could fly right. off and, and correct the brother in your own strength and nothing will happen. But if you stop and pray about it, like, God, open this man's eyes and then wait for the Holy Spirit to be like, all right, now go talk to that dude. You'll probably yeah. have more fruit that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you. for sure. All right. So <laughs> check it out. Let's understand tongues because this is very confused. All right. 
We know that if you read this chapter, 1 Corinthians 14, it basically covers everything. Like everything's in the Bible. Paul's going to tell us that unless you have an interpreter, you shouldn't do tongues in the church, right? But like, I didn't understand that because I knew I had that gift when I first got saved. And I really didn't understand it till the Holy Spirit showed me this. All right. And I want you guys to look closely at this verse. 1 Corinthians 14. We're going to read verse 13 and verse 14. Craig, could you read that? Uh, yeah, 13 and 14. Uh, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may in interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Okay, look at verse 13. He's referencing speaking in tongues. Verse 14, he's talking about praying in tongues. They're two different things. They're two different things. Now, so I'm going to show you speaking in tongues is where you need an interpreter. That's the one that's not that's totally done improperly today. But if we pray in tongues, it's a private prayer language between you and the Lord and nobody else. Nobody else needs to hear it. You don't need to show off. You don't have to do it in front of anybody. But it's a holy reverent gift just between you and the Lord where you're praying from your heart and you're opening your spirit up to God. And you don't even know what you need, but God knows what you need. So you're opening that up, right? And for confirmation on that scripturally, look at verse, uh, verse 27 and 28. It says it right there, 14, 27, and 28. Gee, you hit that? Sure. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be known, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course. And let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. To himself and to God. Now that brother's praying in the spirit. You see what I'm saying? He's not speaking because there's no interpreter. So he says right there, let him be quiet. Keep it to himself. Keep it to God. That's the gift of tongues, guys. It's incredibly simple to understand. Unfortunately, we have all these Pentecostal ministries, and, you know, I'm not saying they're all off or anything, but the way they exercise this gift is unbiblical, bro. And it makes Christians look like a bunch of yahoos that are, like, speaking gibberish and stuff. And it, the thing should not be this way. Paul lays it out very clear for us right there, bro. There's speaking in tongues, and there's praying in tongues. They're two different things, all right? So that covers tongues and interpretation. Does anybody want to add to that before we talk about some more gifts? I just got a question. Yeah, maybe like uh, not fully understanding it. Maybe I got to get context around the, the verse where it says, um, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Right. Uh, my understanding is unfruitful part kind of got me like, what? Yeah, your your fleshly mind, your human brain cannot perceive like the things that are coming out of you. Right. We all got different languages as the Holy Spirit gives us others. That's why it's a gift of God. Okay. So like to your to your to your own brain, you hear the sound coming out of you be like, this is foolish. What am I doing? Right. So your understanding isn't perceiving what's coming out of you in the spirits between you and God. Right. It's 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 holy. All right. Like, say, John, say that like you was struggling with patience real bad, but you couldn't <laughs> discern to ask God, like, God, help me with my patience. But you felt impressed to pray in the spirit or pray in tongues as you're doing that. Between you and God privately, that's what the sound that's coming out of you. Your spirit is asking God to help you to grow in patience. You know what I mean? That's what I thought it was. The whole my understanding is unfruitful. I think it kind of took that wrong. Took it left. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy oh. gift, man. Because to all of us, it doesn't make sense. But in the spirit, it just clicks. You know what I mean? It's hard to understand the spirit. Jesus said it's like the wind. You don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. It just is, bro. And sometimes some of us have had spiritual encounters with God where we can't even nail it down or explain the things that happened to us because it just doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? And sometimes the spirit works that way. Does anybody hey, else want to talk about tongues? I was going to I was going to throw up uh, to hit on what you just talked about. Romans 8, 26 and 27 mm. said in the same way, the spirit also helps us in our weakness. 
because we do, do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And, you know, for people that don't speak in tongues um, or have a private prayer language, whatever, uh, you know, because I'm one of those people, I, I don't have the gift of tongues, but I do know there's a lot of times I'm confused, right? Uh, I, I, you know, you could have two very good options right in front of you, right? Two ministry doors open. And it's like, ah, Lord, which one should I go through? I don't know. I'm confused. And I believe that's what this scripture is referring to. That if we're just saying, God, I really don't know what to do. I don't know what to do in this situation. I just know you've got to give me clarity. That's when I believe that in those moments, we don't have to have understanding. We don't have to know what we're praying for. That when we're just coming to the Lord, seeking them, the Holy Spirit is petitioning the will of God for us. And so, Amen. you know, I, for, for some people who get discouraged because, you know, some people <clears throat> have a very fluent prayer life, prayer language with the Lord. And I know a lot of those people and it's like, they can just get lost in hours, right. in prayer, because they have this amazing fluent language that God's given them. And for other people it could be a struggle to try to pray and have a healthy prayer life. But I feel that even if we don't speak in tongues, we can still pray without understanding and get the same benefit because the Holy Spirit knows what we need, whether we're asking for it or not. Amen, bro. Amen. Amazing point. What was that scripture? Romans eight, what? Uh, 26 and 27. Yeah, that's good right there, bro. That's real good. I'd like to add real quick uh, regarding tongues. Um, I think a lot of times it's one of the most forced gifts and I've seen it being forced by some churches on its people. And it's not something that can be faked. Um, there's been a couple circumstances, and I mean a couple, where I have actually heard somebody praying in tongues or speaking in tongues. And it was genuine. Because the chills that I got, the confirmation from God, and I, and it, not that I had interpretation of it either of the times, but hearing it is most certainly, you will know if you hear somebody do it, like that it's genuine. And um, a lot of times, you know, there is demonic tongues as well. Mm -hmm. And not yep. to go too left with this, but... Um, <laughs> Just be, you know, sometimes if one does try to force it and, you know, the Bible tells us all the time to avoid vain babblings. And, you know, if we don't know what we're saying in the spirit realm, there most certainly is a meaning behind yeah. every sound that we make. So it's one of those things where you really need to let the Holy Spirit take control and just let it let it happen if you have that gift. That's that's all I got on that. Yeah, good, a good point, bro, on the demonic tongues thing too. I've heard that a few times before being a Christian. And from what I remember, it was always like a lot of chanting and guttural. Yeah, but you're absolutely right, bro. Everything that God has, the enemy mocks it, perverts it. So tongues is one of those things. Yeah, that's how I I felt when uh, that guy was forcing me and saying like he wouldn't let us leave the church until like we were doing it, and I started speaking all this stuff, and I was like something in me felt like I could be praying to the devil right now for all I know, and I started getting <laughs> hot and like I almost fell over. Like it was a crazy moment. It was not fun at all. Like it was traumatic, spiritually traumatic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened to you, John, but that's why we got to address this stuff is so we have a biblical understanding of how the gifts are supposed to operate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amen. All right. So yeah. the other utter utterance gift would be prophecy. So that's tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Those are our utterance gifts. We're going to talk about prophecy in a minute here. But I'm going to save that for a second. The revelation gifts are... Uh, Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. And this is interesting, man. Like when you understand word of wisdom, word of knowledge, this can be tricky, right? A good example would be like, say I was to come to G and be like, hey, G, tomorrow you're going to go for a walk and it's going to be seven miles 
through super hot conditions. And then that thing happens, that would be a word of knowledge because I knew the exact mileage and when he was going to take that walk. But say I came to G and I was like, hey, G, take water for your walk tomorrow. Boom. That's the wisdom of God. So now I just dropped a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. So like a word of wisdom is more the overall view that would be the mind of God concerning a matter. And the word of knowledge is more like the specifics or the details of the matter. You see what I'm saying? So it can be a little tricky. Just keep in mind like the overall like plan of God concerning a matter is the word of wisdom. You know, does anybody got any any helps for us on that word of wisdom, word of knowledge? No, I right. believe I'm, oh, I'm, I believe uh, I believe it's always wise. Like anytime you're going into a situation uh, to minister to someone, or you know, if you're at work and you're trying to deal with someone that your flesh just can't stand, whatever. It's I, I always ask for like a word of knowledge all the time. You know, I'm like, I, don't let me speak unless you give me a word of knowledge. Don't let me speak unless you give me a word for somebody. And, uh, you know, I think it, it it's always wise to ask for those as much as you can when you're especially dealing with lost people. I mean, you know, with especially, you know, it's good with brothers, too. If, if someone's grieving or going through some pain, it's always good to ask for a comforting word from the Lord to help that brother or sister. But um, it's really fruitful in evangelism, for sure. Um, you know, I ask for that every time I walk into a gas station with the clerks. Like, man, give me a word for this clerk. Give me something that'll prove you're real, you know, and, and stuff like that. You know, and sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. But, you know, I'd probably ask for it 100 times a day. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I think we should all be seeking that word of knowledge, too, man, because it, it really does validate the spirit when those words come forth true, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's good stuff. The third the third revelation gift would be discerning of spirits now. And I think most of us on this group operate in that gift. It's almost like the Holy Spirit has to give us that gift in this hour that we can discern. Because there's so much garbage out there, bro. There really is. And like, you know, when you get it checked deep in your soul and you just, you don't, you know that something's off. You're like, man, I feel dirty. This isn't right. I don't have any proof to prove that it ain't right. But something inside of me is telling that th me that this is all messed up. That's that gift of God of discerning of spirits right there. It's like a red flag or like your spider sense is tingling, right? Something's going off inside of you to let you know or discern one way or another. That's the gift of discerning of spirits. <clears throat> Does anybody want to speak to that or give us any ideas of how they help discern spirits? I think the best thing to say is to honestly listen to your gut. When you get that check, you get that feeling that nah, something's not right about this. Run with that. Ask God later. Get con It's always you got to get confirmation on these things. But there's so many times where we ignore that. And that actually is the Holy Spirit saying, uh, 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 you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to know that yeah, this, this stay away from this person, like whatever it is, we have to listen to that because if we don't nine times out of 10, it'll end up in a situation where we will be regretting it. And then things have to be taken like measures have to be taken to fix not listening to that discernment that the Lord was trying to give us. Mm -hmm. Good point. And make sure you're aware of like when that's happening and when that red flag goes mm -hmm. off in your head, make sure you're aware each time that happens. So you can actually check your own intuition and see if it's aligned with God or if it's like a little faulty, because if you're living outside of the spirit consistently, your intuition can be, it can be plagued with ignorance. A lot of people I know, they have, uh, they always go with their intuition, but a lot of the time it's a really wrong decision. That's kind of the opposite of what God would want. So it's important to train that and keep that in sight of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Uh, yeah, also, just, go ahead. I no, appreciate ahead, the video that Matthew, you did a long, a while back. It was called the nine points of discernment. Mm -hmm. 
and there was quite a quite a uh, it's interesting to me that it was more than I would have thought of so because you put it together and you were looking at the word and you were showing and going through it with Lisa and you guys built you know built this this these nine points of discernment that somebody could look at it's almost like uh god's what he's trying to give us is is it is actually a lot of information there's a there's a way to go about it that's a little more advanced than we might just say you know all oh, this feeling like you were saying in the beginning oh i have this feeling that i shouldn't minister to this person but then later on it was like revealed that god has a little bit more <laughs> he has it all i don't mean that i i i'm just i was grateful for that video and i i have it in my journal i should go back and actually try to you know look at the nine points of discernment to grow in it because it's not just one way so i appreciated yeah. that yeah yeah and like i mean not to get into all nine of them but ba basically guys when in doubt look at the fruit the fruit the Jesus says you can tell a man by what kind of fruit, right? Because you could have Christians saying all sorts of stuff, but their fruit stinks. You know what I mean? So when you're in doubt about discerning, dude, look at what kind of fruit this situation's producing. The fruit is everything, man. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. It is, yeah. Another thing too with discerning of spirits, uh you know, in this day and age, especially like if if you know, if you're like me, where a lot of the people you listen to come in the form of like YouTube or whatever, if you listen to a lot of sermons, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there where a lot of good people, a lot of good preachers are being labeled as false teachers, false prophets, whatever. And, uh, you know, it's real easy to throw the good ones out with the bad just because you watched a YouTube critique video or something was taken out of context or edited or spliced, you know? So I, I did that one time. I, years ago, one of the first opportunities I got to preach, I preached against a Christian rapper and I did it because I found a video and I had to come back and apologize to the church later because someone who just simply didn't like that particular rapper edited some things, made it look like he was saying a bunch of pro homosexual stuff. And the guy never was. And, you know, and I just took that guy's video and said, we need to quit listening to this and throw it out of your house. And, you know, and like, I just really jumped the gun and blasphemed a brother without really doing my due diligence. And so the Lord taught me a serious lesson in that, that, uh, you know, <clears throat> we definitely got to be on guard because I think the majority of it out there needs to be questioned and watched. But there's also a lot of really good teachings out there that we overlook and neglect just because you know somebody said oh well i don't like his stance on the rapture so he's apostate yeah yeah that's a good point wade and then another good point to that i like what you said is uh you know we got to be humble enough that when we make mistakes like that especially publicly to be accountable for our mistakes bro and to speak the truth that's really what's going to define the boys from the men right there you know most definitely. Most definitely. Amen. All right. All right. So that's um that's revelation gifts. We're to wisdom, we're to knowledge, discerning of spirits. Our last bulk of gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 was the power gift. This is faith, healing, and miracles. Okay. Faith is an interesting thing. We know in Hebrews 11, there's that whole scripture. It's like, you know, faith is the substance of things not seeing that or the evidence of whatever i forget how it goes <laughs> but faith is a fruit and it's a gift it's both it's the only one that's both okay so we can ask god to give us faith as a gift but also we can produce faith uh through like sufferings and and through growth and maturity faith can be produced in your walk also you know it's a fruit and it's a gift it's like really faith is probably the most important thing because if we believe in Christ, right? It's like, what is the definition of faith, right? Believing in something that you really, you really can't prove, 
because it's spiritual. And like we were discussing earlier, it's difficult to explain or show the things of the spirit. And faith is that, you know what I mean? What do you guys, because there's a lot to say about this. I want to hear what you guys have to say. What do you guys got on faith, man? That gift of faith. Greg, you got something, bro? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, I would say the gift of faith is just, you know, your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for salvation. Uh, you know, the gospel, having faith in Christ is, is, you know, paramount. You know, that's what we put everything on. But a lot of people have trouble with that. Uh, you know, they have trouble believing and, um, you know, that that's a that's a gift to have faith and and belief in Jesus Christ that 2000 years ago uh he uh he lived and died and was resurrected for our sins. Amen. Yes, yeah, so I guess like too if we're lacking faith or we feel that we're struggling in our faith because it is that gift you can pray and ask God God increase my faith. Remember Jesus prayed that for his disciples all the time. Increase their faith, right? So we can pray and ask God to increase our faith. Um, I think faith is proud of all these gifts we're talking about. Honestly, I think this is the greatest one, bro. It really well, is. You know, uh, Matthew, you've got doubting Thomas. You know, he had to put his finger, you know, his finger in the hole of uh, Christ. So, uh, uh, you know, in the nail hole in his hand or whatever, or in his uh, his uh, stomach. But uh you know, and, and he was saying, you know, you've got faith and you're in front of me or having trouble with faith. You know, how about the people that li live 2000 years later? So it's definitely a gift to have unwavering faith. Amen. Faith is a necessity. You know what I mean? Faith is a necessity in this. And I'll, I'll, I'll give uh, a corny little example real quick, like an airplane, for instance, right? Every time somebody gets in an airplane, they have the faith that it's going to fly in the air. It's going to fly in the air and it's going to get them safely to their destination. Now, if you look at it logically, an airplane by no means should be able to. It, you got seat cushions, metals, gasoline, all this heavy stuff, humans, blood, all this stuff that has no business flying. Because the laws of physics say it's not even so, but yet it's possible. We see planes all the time fly. We've been on flights. You know what I mean? So if something that doesn't make sense logically that we can see with our eyes that we have experienced, faith in the Lord is no different because there are times that we do see him. We see him within each other. We see him in the acts that we do, acts of kindness, acts of charity. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is all about that charity, that agape love. You know, um, when we're ministering, and when I say ministering, I mean whoever it is that is in their occupation, God has got everybody where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. And if we're serving the Lord, driven by the Holy Spirit, people's faith will grow by seeing others in faith, if that makes sense. And, yeah. um, you know, the Lord said the faith of a mustard seed is the smallest of seeds, but faith that small can grow into moving mountains quite literally. And I think that's important to note and faith that that's what faith is, is putting trust in something we know, even when we can't see it. Amen. Amen. All right. So that's our main power gift, faith. But our other power gifts are healings and miracles. A lot of us on this line can testify that God's healed us from stuff, uh, incurable stuff. God, God's ways are not our ways, man. Like the Bible says in Proverbs, there's a way unto men that seems right and its end is in death, right? And God says in Isaiah 55 verse 8, don't even try to figure it out because my ways are not your ways, nor are my thoughts, your thoughts, for they're higher than the heavens. So we as men or as human beings perceive we think we know things. And really God's saying, you you know nothing. You know what I mean? So keep all that in mind with the faith, the healings, the miracles. Those are the power gifts. Okay. Let's look at a second set of gifts. Some of us can relate a little bit more to these gifts. 
They're found in Romans 12. So let's go to Romans 12. There's seven of them listed here. We're going to Romans 12, and we're going to read verse 6 through 8. Charlie, you want to read that one? Romans 12, 6 through 8. You're on mute. Yeah, you muted out, bro. I was going to say, it gives me faith uh, once in a while because uh, I'll just open the Bible and, and it just goes right to the page. It just went there, you know, Romans 12, boom, one open. I mean, those are small things, but I've had a lot of, and it's amazing. It's, it, it is a gift. Uh, so Romans 12, 6 to 8. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> uh, here we go. Uh, we all have gifts. They differ according to the grace God has given to each of us. Do you have the gift of prophecy? Then use it according to the faith you have. If your gift is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. Is it encouraging others? Then encourage them. Is it giving to others? Then give freely. Is it being... A leader, then work hard at it. Is it showing mercy? Mercy, then do it cheerfully. I love that. Okay, I, I want to. That's good, bro. I want to read the New King James here. It has a few others in there. It says, uh, "Let us have gifts differing in accordance to the grace that has been given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. If ministry." Let us use it in our ministering, he who teaches and teaching, he who exhorts and exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So we have prophecy, ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, and mercy. Let's talk about these, okay? Because... um. Let's start with prophecy. And this is the one I've been wanting to cling to. We already read that first scripture that says that prophecies for edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. There's another one I want to look at about prophecy in Revelation. Revelation 19.10. Wade, what do you got there? Okay. 1910. Yep. Then I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and your brothers and sisters who hold firmly to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we take that, what, what was said there, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, coupled with what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 3. That in the new covenant of Jesus Christ, prophecy is given to us for edification, exhortation, and comfort to men, right? So this is really how prophecy works now in the new covenant, okay? So um, that sort of gives us a better picture. I like how he says right here in Romans 12, if prophecy, then let us prophesy by our portion of faith, right? We're just talking about that, man, by how much you believe in God. How much has God done for you? What is your testimony of Christ in your life? What have you seen God do in your life? I don't know about you guys, man. But I've seen God do some mighty things already. I've only been saved like eight years. You know what I mean? And I've seen him do some crazy things in people's life, man. Some of the guys on this line got some pretty amazing testimonies of what God's pulled them out of. You know what I mean? And that's that spirit of prophecy, man. Um. All right, so the next one he mentions in, for, in Romans 12 is ministry, okay? A lot of us have this gift, the gift of ministry. He said, uh, let us, let us, what do you say? Let us minister by what? Let us use it in our ministering, okay? What does that mean? The Bible gives us a definition of what true ministry looks like, 
Okay, so let's read it. It's in Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Do you want to read that? Sure. I love when it's plays hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> Colossians 3, what was it, bro? 12 through 15. 12 through 15, got it. Yeah, the biblical definition of ministry. Amen. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity which is the bond of perfectness, perfectness. Continue. Amen. Amen. So there we go. God gives us an outline of what ministry looks like. All right. Romans 12 says the third gift is teaching, right? We already looked at James three, that Jack read earlier that says, don't desire that a lot of you be teachers knowing that you'll be held to a stricter judgment. And I mean, I don't want to like scare anybody, but I mean, dude, teaching is very serious because if you cause other people to stumble, like God, God is not pleased with that. If you're teaching lies and causing baby, what does Jesus say? He says, if you cause a, a little one to stumble, it's better that a millstone be hung from your neck and be thrown into the sea, right? So this is a very serious thing to God. This is not a joke or anything to be taken lightly. That's why James says this. And that's why a lot of there's a there's a lot of us on here have that teaching ability. OK, we read the word. God gives us revelation. We get insight and we share it with others. That's great. Right. Just just keep a reverent fear of the Lord and humility, man, in all your teaching. Don't not teach because you're scared because then you're burying your talents and God don't like that either. So don't bury your talent. If God gives you something to teach, go teach it. Just keep your mind frame humble, bro, and know that it all comes from the Lord, and it's his spirit pouring out through you, you know? Um, the next one's exhortation, which means basically like lifting up, right? Like you guys ever you guys ever see like how when your brother in Christ feels like crap, he's got that spirit of heaviness, he's all sad and depressed, and like you want to cheer him up. You know what I mean? You're praying for that brother. You're praying that the Lord lift them up and help them. That's the gift of exhortation that God put in your heart to lift that brother up in his lowly place. Or say somebody's struggling with a sin really bad and you love that brother and you don't want to see him caught in that snare and struggling and that stuff. So you pray for him in the secret place. You talk to that brother. You encourage him. You lift him up, man. You edify him, right? You're ex you have that gift of exhortation. To lift your brother in Christ up. That's what it's given for. That we would all lift each other up. And be there for one another. And be knit together in Christ. Okay. Uh, now this one. I'm, we're getting down to. We got three left. Giving, leading, and mercy. I want to talk about giving. Because here's another one. Just like tongues. And just like the fivefold. That is manipulated beyond belief. With this whole prosperity. Garbage. And all this stuff. Right. So let's look at what the New Testament says about giving. Okay. Let's go to uh let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 7 through 9. I want to I want to see if you guys catch this here. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 and 9. Chris, what do you got there? So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly. Or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all insufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. All right, look at the first part of what Paul says there. Okay, let him give out of what he purposes in his heart or out of the abundance of his heart. Okay, so like 
there'll be a time where the spirit will lead you to give, right? And 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 how much that is is between you and the Lord. And there's a reason and a purpose for it. He's asked God in the new covenant, like the old testament said, we got to tithe 10%. And that's good, right? And if that's what God puts in your heart, then amen. That's what God puts in your heart. But now in the new covenant saying, give out of the abundance of your heart. This is a gift from God that you can release, right? What you work for and use it to prosper God's kingdom, to grow his kingdom out of the abundance that God gives you. And notice he says right after that, God loves a cheerful giver because he wants you to give with that, that fruit of joy. He doesn't want it to be like a tedious thing, like harsh, like you have to do it all the time. He doesn't want that. He doesn't, he'd rather you not do it. Okay. He would rather you give out of the abundance that he put in your heart with joy, man. It's like a blessing. It's a gift from God to even be able to give like we in the West. I don't think really understand. Like, I don't know. I've, I've lived down in Mexico and I know some of you guys have lived abroad. Like Craig's been over to like some really shady parts of Africa. And I, I think Andy done some stuff. And like, dude, when I was in Mexico, dude, I was down in Juarez and I was, I was riding freight trains. I was homeless and I was in this abandoned building and there was a dude in this building. Right. And there was like turds everywhere. And this guy was living in the rubble of a blowed up house. This like little Mexican dude. I felt bad for the guy. So I gave him a ramen noodle pack out of my backpack. And homeboy didn't say a word to me, but he started crying because nobody had given him nothing before, right? He's living in a broken down house in his own poop. And I gave him a ramen and he started crying, dude. And see, in the West, we don't really understand these things. But giving is a gift from God, bro, that God gives us an abundance and then we can take that abundance and distribute it and share it to pr to bring that kingdom of God to others in need. You see what I mean? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's giving, bro. We got to give out of the abundance of our heart with a joyful spirit, man. It's really important. Otherwise, don't even give it all because we, it's no blessing in that, you know? We had a time where... Uh... Sarafina and I were in Vancouver and we just decided we'll make a big pot of soup as a kind of a faith base. Okay, we'll try it out and see how it goes. So as we were making the soup, Sarafina was kind of wanting to make it better and better. And then she was kind of saying, well, we need to make bread too. So we made this homemade bread and everything. And by the time we actually hit the streets, like people were so thankful. And uh, like we, the, the, the amount of stuff that we learned just by getting out there the fact that people needed like some medical supplies they needed water and like the stuff that people needed but people were just like saying you know they really appreciate it and then they were actually praying for us because i i didn't even have the boldness to say you know jesus loves you when i gave him a thing of soup yet but it helped me to see you know that if you do, you can be good, but you're, you're doing it because you know that that's what God wants you to do. It's not like I'm trying to do it to, to get recognition or something, but when you actually do it, then you, you do feel the blessing of, of what you'll hear from people or what. So I was grateful for that just to learn, learn some things there. Yeah, like, so basically what you're saying, Charlie, is when your heart's right with God, good works just flow out over it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like David says in Psalm 23, 5, my cup runneth over, right? So when our walk's right with the Lord and God's pouring into us, it overflows through good works to others. It's just God's nature. It's who he is, man. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And like Charlie's example there, that's why giving is a gift from God because you can impact lives, man. You you can take people that are beaten up on drugs and just like so broken, bro. And totally God can transform their belief and their faith and everything through just you loving on them in, a, in agreement with the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? You can change lives, bro. You really can through that gift. All right. I got two more here, guys. We're going to wrap it up. All right. The, the last two is out of Romans 12 was leading. OK. And the, it says right there in the scripture, we lead through diligence and administrations. 
right? So some of us are gifted in that area to have that administrative mindset. That's a gift from God, man. The end of 1 Corinthians 14, he says, I, the Lord, am, he's a God of order. So when you bring order to chaos, that's like a gift from God. Like, and I don't mean that some weird, like, you know, the, they say that on the dollar bill. Or the chaos. <laughs> I'm saying that like, you know, like God, God brings order to chaotic people and chaotic situations. He'll bring that sound mind or that love or whatever. Right. So administrations and leading is a gift from God. Okay. And say you, you heard this whole teaching tonight, you heard every gift and ministry went through and you're like, Oh, none of these apply to me. Well, the last one in Romans 12 is mercy. Okay. For that's a gift of God for you to be merciful in your life and to others. Right. Say, say, say you have, you don't think you have any gifts of God, but God's given you a family right? A mother, a father, or children or something for you to be merciful to them that God's put in your life. That in itself is a gift of God, right? He says, let us do it with cheerfulness. And if you really want to get into it, Exodus 34, when God comes to Moses and puts him in the cleft of the rock, he declares of himself that he says, I, the Lord, am long suffering and merciful, right? So it's the very nature of God. He gives to his children as a gift, the gift of mercy. All right. So that's all I got tonight. Anybody want to add to that or chime in on that or anything? Great word, brother. Praise God. Yeah, I just want to say, always encouraged to uh, join the group. And I feel like I'm learning a lot each week. The week, as it goes on, I'm thinking about the, testimonies and the what everybody said and it's really making things different uh and i just wanted to say like sometimes you go to do something good and there could be a trial like the one time we were making the soup the blender busted open and hot soup burnt my whole hand but then like shortly after that my friend we were making it at his house he says do you guys need a jacket and then we go out there and the first guy that comes up do you have a jacket and it was just like god it says right here it says god supplies the seed for the person who plants it's like if we're wanting to do something he's gonna put even more for us so i'm just happy to to be part of the group amen yeah i think everybody on here we all have different like walks with the lord and god makes us all different unique so it's good when you guys share we sharpen iron right because we all have different beliefs and we all see scripture a little bit differently we all bring that together i think it's a it's a good thing man when we can sharpen iron in a place of love and understanding you know amen, amen. um let's see andy you want to pray us out tonight bro yeah cool Heavenly father we thank you for this time we could gather together as fellow believers and just uh thank you for matthew and the his willingness and commitment to put together these studies and gather all the bible verses and and that we could all kind of give some input to that and pray that you'd help us to learn from that god and uh as we identify the gifts that we have amongst in our own self and and in others, and I just pray you'd help us to develop those gifts more. And if we have some gifts that we haven't operated in in, in some time, that you would uh, give us encouragement to sharpen that gift and help the others in this group to help us to sharpen each other. And just pray that we'd all have a good week here at our jobs and or on the road or uh, reaching out to others. And just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a great week, guys. All right, fellas.